Hey guys, what's up? Fletcher here, just wanna talk about some certain changes uh, we could hopefully see and would like to see in the future of Call of Duty um, that I hope not just my viewers will watch and listen to, but maybe somebody from one of the dev teams. Uh, hopefully they may see this and respond to it or uh, maybe just, you know, chew on it for a little bit. But yeah, that I guess would be my target audience, but feel free to watch and put your thoughts in the comments at the end of this video. In my last few videos, I've gone over reasons I worry for the Call of Duty franchise, looking at the numbers that are really hard to track down and what they actually say about the franchise's health and success and how long it's gonna last from here on out and how quickly it may dip down in the future, especially when compared to how good they're telling us everything's going. Those numbers don't lie and it's pretty worrisome, but at this point, not surprising. When the main things that we are complaining about or pointing out as a problem or things that they have done enough research on their own to know is a problem and are hurting the franchise, when they ignore those things or try to add some type of band-aid that in itself isn't necessarily working to bring back the player count they were actually aiming for, but they keep it because the player count that is still there is spending more money because of this new band-aid. It seems the people in charge are willing to ride this franchise into the dirt as long as they are making some money every step of the way. The whole structure seems to be now based around microtransactions. Again, as I pointed out prior, the dip we've had in Call of Duty's performance overall after the implementations of microtransactions, the only performance that wasn't really super negatively affected would be how much money they were making, and it's because of microtransactions, obviously. That's the nature of them. Especially if the franchise drops down to only a couple million players and their total player count in the first couple months after a release. It doesn't matter how many microtransactions you have, you're not going to be making any money close to the bank that you would be making if you had just released a straight up good Call of Duty without microtransactions, bringing in 20 million players in the first few months. Um, now we can measure Call of Duty by microtransactions, but I'm not going to measure them by the thing that is actually killing them and hurting not only the sales, but the player retention. Those two things are actually what's keeping Call of Duty afloat. So that's what I'm gonna judge Call of Duty's by. When Call of Duty had the best player retention in game sales, the system they had revolved around a game with very little ping interfering algorithms for matchmaking. The, the biggest algorithm that would possibly interfere with ping or matchmaking would be things related to uh, lag compensation. A good example of that being, of course, Modern Warfare 3's lag compensation, which was brutal, but that was literally like the worst thing we really had to deal with as far as screwing up matchmaking went. Outside of, of course, people with straight up bad connections screwing up the game. Of course, I'm just talking about things from Call of Duty, from the devs, from the coding that screwed things up for us. Uh, the other part of the structure uh, was you bought map packs when they came out, 15 bucks a pop. There was usually three to four, and then they introduced season passes, which some people had a problem with, but the majority of the community really didn't have that big an issue with. And it's been kind of brought back up in conversation, especially on Reddit and some posts on Twitter. Uh, people bring it up like, you know, what happened to that? And there's a lot of people who weren't in Call of Duty who are in Call of Duty now and didn't get to experience Call of Duty at that time. And maybe we should go back to that because what we've switched to in place of that has become very problematic for the community and the franchise as a whole. And none of us saw it coming in that way. In the past, even though some of the features in the games like perks and stuff wasn't too realistic, once you got out of that menu and you went into playing the game itself and you were playing and you were looking at the atmosphere and the ambiance and all the details, it sucked you in. It was tangible. It was something you could imagine being in and touching. It, it felt real, even though it was very unrealistic, like Modern Warfare 2. It was like an action movie. Even though bullets don't make a shit ton of sparks or make a lot of the same sounds that you heard in that game, it's all very Hollywood. You know, it was still tangible to us, down to the uniforms and equipment, which brings me to my next issue. When you are in the military, whether it's a group of rangers or a group of marines, there isn't a lot of individuality. You're all pretty much wearing the same uniform. You aren't taught or trained to be an individual. You have similar uniform, you have pretty much the same equipment, and you were all pretty much clones of one another. Minus maybe a few uh, morale patches you get okayed to use on deployment. Maybe you have a couple extra magazine pouches. Uh, maybe you have a different sidearm, or your IFAC is put on a different place, or maybe they let you grow some facial hair out there and, and people got their own different do. All of that is about it for individuality. And in Modern Warfare Remastered, they played with that as much as they possibly could for the sake of microtransactions. See, when you have a game that's based on soldiers or marines or operators that for the most part have a very strict professional demeanor in their uniforms and equipment, like in the Golden to Silver Age of Call of Duty, 
You don't have that much room for change, customization, or to add these crazy items or microtransactions. And there was something to one team being dressed a certain way and the other team being dressed another way. That made it more fun, tangible, and approachable. And we took it for granted and a lot of us failed to recognize when it was gone and then we began to miss it without realizing what exactly we were missing. What about the new games felt off? Because in order to get more microtransactions, they realized they needed every player that you played as in every match to be completely malleable and customizable. So the days of Call of Duty campaigns that focus more on soldiers than anything else turn to loosely regulated operators who can wear whatever the hell they want when they want in any situation and then stamp it as realistic and tangible, translated into its multiplayer, this huge stretch, this huge leap is all for the sake of microtransactions. And instead of building microtransactions around a game or around a decision that was based on what's best for the game, they are now building decisions and building games around microtransactions. They create a bunch of different ideas to use in the game and decide which one they can abuse more with microtransactions. And they go with that one. And then they discuss how they can implement it into the game without hurting the game too much. Maybe you should focus on not hurting the game at all, but whatever. Devs no longer get to strictly rely on the thought process of what would be cool or what would younger, more enthusiastic me do when creating a game. They now build a game thinking, what would Bobby Kotick do? The core of the game and what was added to that used to be based on what would be cool? What could we do? What would be dope? What, could we, what kind of story can we make? There's no parameters. There's no limits. There's no guidelines forcing us one way or another. We are free to make this. And then it went into, hey, before you make this game, before you even have a thought, Make sure microtransactions is considered in your creative process before you put that shit on paper. And if you are a dev watching this, and maybe things aren't exactly that way, I apologize, but this is how it seems on our end. Between the games, between the changes, between the conversations that were leaked out, uh, between the tweets, or between the lack of tweets in response to questions from fans, that is the impression we are getting. So now, when you play online, and you see the enemy team, they all look like you guys. They all look like a bunch of random people. It's no longer Call of Duty. It's no longer soldiers fighting soldiers. It's regular hipsters dressed in whatever the hell they want fighting each other. It might as well be called Urban Warfare Active Shooters. They had to add extra interface into the game just to make the enemy team discernible from your own. Before your screen or HUD could be minimal or more open and clear without too much shit on it, you could tell somebody was on the enemy by the fact that their uniform was different than your team's. It was simple, it was approachable. Look, microtransactions hurting Call of Duty is undeniable. When you look at all the statistics, all the measurable forms of performance, and now even the extra money made from microtransactions is reaching its limit, something's gotta change. Bring back soldier versus soldier warfare and just figure out what type of customization you can do with that. I actually liked how creative you guys got with soldiers in Modern Warfare Remastered. I still felt I could customize my Marine or my Russian Nationalist, while at the same time still being able to tell the difference between what player belonged to what team when I played multiplayer. Rather than microtransactions, maybe put more focus on maps and the core gameplay. Again, if you're worried about making money, just try going back to the season pass again. I had no problem paying 10 to 15 bucks for a map pack and or paying a big chunk of money up front for a season pass. Hell, add a new weapon and some cool camos, morale patches, weapons kits in every map pack. Then make all those accessories available to buy separately for those people who don't want or can't afford to spend all the money on the map pack. That way, they buy the accessories, and then when they save up enough money to buy the map pack anyways, they do it, and they're not only buying the map pack, they're rebuying accessories they already bought. You can still rip off young, impressionable children with addictive tendencies. What's funny is you guys know your older formula should probably be brought back. I mean, you admit it when you freak out and remaster a bunch of old maps from good Call of Duties, when you freak out and you remaster entire games from that era, you are admitting that that era is your safety blanket. And when you add customization to the characters in Modern Warfare Remastered, and then you add customizations to characters in Modern Warfare 2 Remastered multiplayer when that drops, Rangers are still going to look like Rangers, and the bad guys are still going to look like bad guys. And you won't need to add any extra interface for us to discern between our team and the other team, because you wouldn't dare change what we know is better. You know that we would go freaking apeshit and lose our minds if you tried to do this operator bullshit in those good games for the sake of microtransactions. We want rangers to look like rangers. We want our rebels to look like rebels. We want our Russian nationalists to look like Russian nationalists. We want our marines to look like marines. And that shit where every soldier looks like they just stepped out of a second in Charles, leave that shit to Fortnite. Leave that crazy customizable bullshit to Warzone where everybody's their own person. They're not a part of a team. They're all individuals anyways. 
You put so much focus on microtransactions and adding new weapons and stuff, you don't even have time to balance simply for the sake of more microtransactions. You are choosing cosmetics and kids reaching in their mama's purses over making an unbelievably smooth core game. You are like a car dealership who focuses more on the rims and the paint job than the engine, and when people complain that the engine needs a little bit of work, you add new neon lights underneath and a couple of decals hoping that that'll keep them buying. Every time we play one of your recent games, we see that potential. We see the smoothness is there, but you add more than you can handle. You bite off more than you can chew. And you know you guys are adding more than you can handle to balance and, and make everything work together. You guys know that you are setting up an impossible task for yourself, but you're doing it because you're making money from the microtransactions. And I know probably a lot of you devs, if you're watching this, you probably feel as helpless as we do. You probably want these changes to happen. You probably want things to go back to one way or another, and you can't, which sucks. But I just thought I'd speak my mind. I hope some important people possibly see this. Um, please be sure to like this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Comment down below with your thoughts. Keep the conversation going. And I will catch you guys next time.